Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. My name is Kubis Burgers. I'm the Managing Director of NetCB here in South Africa. Uh, we have uh, Robin Redko from uh, Microfocus, who is going to present us quite a bit of information today on what you can do with Filer today. He is also, like they say, the guru for Filer at Microfocus. Also, I would like to welcome um, Fabian Lopez and Jenny Whiteside, also from Microfocus. Um, they are the account managers, um, so you can contact them after this as well, as well as Ron van Herk, who is in pre-sales engineer, uh, with whom you will hear of in September when we have a special webinar on Zenworks as well. Over to you, Robin. Um, by the way, just before we continue uh, with Robin, um, if you want to ask a question, you can see that there's a Q&A option on your screen. So you can actually ask and post your questions on the Q&A and after the presentation, we will answer these questions. Um, Robin may even answer some of the questions while we are in the presentation. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Kobus. So, um, yeah, as uh, Kobus said, do ask questions as we're going through. Uh, the whole point of this is for you guys to understand uh, as much as uh, uh, possible about Filer uh, at the end of uh, the day. Um, so, first of all, what I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about how our working practices have changed um, in the past few months. I'm sure that uh, most of us have uh, recognized that uh, people aren't going into the office quite so much as they were before. And uh, we are having to um, work from home and remotely quite a bit more than we were previously. So, you know, previously, users tended to be in um, in the office, they could access files that were sitting on file servers, be the Windows, OES, NAS boxes, um, and they mostly did that when they were in the office and inside the firewall, but that was somewhat restricted in that you could only access your files from a workstation that was um, uh, inside the firewall. You know, if you were remote, you could use a VPN, but that was quite slow um, coming through there. And IT had quite a overhead on them having to manage all of this and um, uh, make sure that uh, regulations weren't being broken. And of course, users then started turning email into a file server. You know, uh, you've got uh, you're easy enough to attach a file to an email, but then email post offices tend to bloat in size quite a bit, especially if you're using an email system that doesn't do single message store. And you had problems accessing the latest version of a file because you had many different versions coming in. Um, you know, so to get around this, uh, users tended to go and try and do IT bypass. So they'd go and copy files up to some cloud-based service that you have no control over, um, where you haven't got access controls, controlling who can see that file. They're not set by the corporation um, at all. Um, and you know your sensitive information gets exposed. Um, I was talking to a, a university the other day where they'd lost a whole load of uh, intellectual property of a, a whole course that um, had uh, been taken away and started being used by another university in Asia. Um, your sensitive information gets uh, uh, yep, exposed there, uh, which obviously you don't want. Also, you've got regulatory compliance at risk. I came across um, another organization. Uh, you most probably will have heard of them, and they're now using Filer, thank heavens. But they uh, found that their financial director was putting up their uh, financial reports into a cloud-based system 
uh, for sharing with other financial people. Uh, and of course, that was totally against all financial regulations and so on. Um, uh, so you've got need to be able to control this. But users want a Dropbox, uh, Dropbox like experience, you know, they're familiar with that, they want something uh, that gives them that sort of functionality, being able to access files, be able to share files and so on. But you want files to stay on prem typically. You don't want those going out to the cloud because you lose control of your files uh, if they go out to the cloud. Um, leave, why not just leave the files where they are on the existing file servers? You don't have, want to migrate um, terabytes and terabytes of data up into the cloud um, and as, as, even if you did migrate data up into the cloud your existing access controls that you've spent years building up of who can see what files and so on uh, go out the window because you have to reapply those on a cloud-based system and of course people want to be able to um, use files um, in uh, real time and work on them with others. So what exactly is Filer? So you've got your existing storage, your file storage sitting there. That may be Windows servers, open enterprise servers, um, maybe NAS boxes, SharePoint, that sort of thing uh, there. And you've got your clients who are trying to um, yeah, access that. And these may well be desktop clients like Windows, Mac, Linux. They may be mobile clients like iOS and Android. Uh, and of course, uh, web browser. And typically, you know, if you're outside the office, you've got problems to, uh, accessing those files. And indeed, with, if you're on a mobile client, trying to access um, storage even internally is quite difficult. So what Filer does is it will sit in front of your storage as a virtual appliance and that will run on uh, VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, Citrix Zen, uh, your existing hypervisor there and give you functionality to access those files that you've got in your existing environment with uh, a cloud-based uh, cloud feel to it. So for the end users that we've got there, they can obviously access their files from more or less anywhere uh, at any time coming through there. Uh, we do let people share files. They can be shared both internally um, uh, and externally. So I can share a file with a partner outside, with a patient, um, with a student, for instance. They don't have to be part of the system in order to access those files um, that are there. We have the ability to edit files without moving uh, data down to the workstation. So I can edit files online securely um, and there are quite a few DLP options, data loss prevention options that you have with that, which we'll cover uh, later on. Uh, you can receive email notifications when things happen. Have you ever you know, been sitting there waiting for someone to update a file? and you don't know if they've done it or not, and you keep opening up the file to see if the changes are there, you can get an email telling you that uh, the, uh, it's been modified. And we can make comments on files there as well. Uh, something else that's quite nice is full text searching uh, across all files. So I want to find any file that talks about NetCB, I can just do a search and that will not just find files that have got NetCB in the uh, file name, but also within the text of the document. So that will search through Word documents, PDF files, presentations, um, and so on. So I can find exactly what I want to uh, do, uh, uh, to um, uh, access there. Um, if you're offline with your desktop and mobile, you can take files with you you can edit those files and when they change they'll and um, when you next connect they'll be uploaded back up into the system um, and indeed if you've got something like a price list uh, on your local laptop and you connect and the file on the back end has changed it will pull down the new price list so you're always up to date with information there 
for the IT admin side of things, we've, they've got control over um, who's sharing information, um, who they can share with, and indeed based on each um, net uh, share that you're exposing, um, uh, uh, who's got rights to share from that. Uh, and we'll have a look at that a bit later on. We do have reports uh, in there to find out who did what. Uh, we can do things like wiping file of data. So if somebody loses their iPad, you can wipe all the data off uh, that, the file of data um, uh, off uh, that. It won't wipe the whole device. Uh, if you want to learn out how to wipe the whole device, turn up in September to Ron's um, uh, webinar and he'll tell you about that side of things. But we can wipe the filer um, data um, from devices. We can customize the look and feel. Um, we can uh, configure notifications and so on. But for the CIO, we have uh, some important things. The employee's productivity increases. They're not messing around trying to access files that they uh, wouldn't otherwise have access to. They, we reuse the existing storage. The files stay where they are. We don't actually move them in any way uh, at all. So it's very quick to set up. You can very rapidly expose, um, you know, millions of files uh, through this. Um, and of course, we use your existing access controls that you've spent years building up there. If there's a file I'm not allowed to see on the file system, I'm not going to see it in Filer, unless, of course, Jenny has rights to share it and she shares it with me, in which case I can have rights to see that one file. Um, there's a very low uh, total cost of ownership and most important of all, everything stays on prem and you are remaining in control of your data. You're not passing that control off to somebody else up into the cloud where they can do what they want to it. And you've got, uh, well, let's face it, every week we see about some cloud-based solution having problems with security uh, and losing data. So let's have a um, quick uh, demo of uh, this. So here you can see we can brand this uh, quite happily with uh, corporate branding. Um, in this case, I've um, uh, uh, put on a background image here, but let's just um, log in. So I log in with my normal credentials. So this would be my AD credentials or my e-directory credentials here. And let's just log in. So um, up along the top, I've got access to files that have been recently um, uh, accessed. I can download. Um, desktop clients and so on from here, uh, should I wish to. But most importantly, I've got access to my files. So this is my home directory on the file system. Um, these are my net shares. So I can see here um, uh, departmental shares that have been uh, and locational shares that have been set up um, on the system. Those ma match to uh, the um, drive mappings that I might normally have. So down here, I've got my normal drive mappings um, uh, that you might have going through to your information on the back end. So um, I can access these files. I've got an option to go and preview files quite happily. I can zoom in and out on a graphic, for instance, if I wanted to um, at uh, that point. So I don't need to download a file in order to view it. And we've got viewers for several hundred different file formats um, here. Um, so, uh, you know, things like um, Visio diagrams, uh, AutoCAD files and so on, we can uh, preview um, at that point. Uh, if I want to edit a file, I've got an option here. I can just download that file quite happily and edit it locally with the local application if the administrators lets me do that. And the great thing about doing that is that, um, and that will work with things like uh, Microsoft Office, um, is that when I save the file, it goes back into um, Filer and the file system. I don't have to save it locally and then upload it um, to 
um, the system there. Or more likely, I've got this option here to edit online. So um, that will let me edit that file within a browser. I don't have to download that file to my workstation. It still stays up in your data center. Uh, so in this case, you know, if this was a 100 page document, all I've got down at my workstation is what you're viewing on the screen there. Um, uh, so uh, quite secure. You can see here some other DLP options I've got. I've put my email address as a watermark behind this. So if I was to take out my camera and uh, my phone and take a picture of that, uh, it's got my email address all over there. Um, I can do things like stop people copying data outside of this. So if I copy that, let's just go into notepad and just show you here that um, if I paste, uh, that's not what I just copied. It's what was on in notepad uh, previously um, there. So I can't copy data outside. This is an option that the administrator can set for security. Similarly, I can go and stop people printing. If I don't want uh, people to print or stop people downloading the file offline, and so they can only save the file back to the original file that was uh, there. So some very good uh, DLP options for that if you're keen on security of documents. Um, some of the other things that we can do, I mentioned about following if things change, I can uh, just say follow this file. So if somebody edits this file, I'll get an email notifying me that uh, uh, the file has been edited um, at that point. Um, we've got uh, the option obviously to download files here. Um, if I wanted to download items, I can take that offline. If indeed I'm allowed to take things offline um, there. Uh, but let's just go through sharing uh, something here. So if I, uh, let's just come in here, I've got the option to share an item. So let's just, uh, so I can share this with um, an internal um, user. So let's just share that with Adele. Uh, and if I'm allowed to, and remember these are rights that um, may be set, whether I'm allowed to share internally, externally, uh, here, I can just share this with an external user just by typing in their email address. Um, so let's uh, just share with that a bit of a message. Please edit. Um, then I can give rights. Well, let's say they can edit this file. So notice in this instance, I'm giving this external user rights to edit a file there because maybe I'm working on a project with them. I want them to be able to uh, access that file and modify it. And I can specify this is going to expire at the end of next week. Um, there, And then I can just save that share. So now I've shared that file with um, internal and external users. You can see there, this is my external user who's just uh, received that email notification. But of course, our file system and indeed our um, filer system have no idea who this user is. So if I just come in here. Oh, by the way, sorry, this was me messing around trying to edit um, uh, the notification. You can edit, put your own text and stuff on there uh, if you wanted to. Um, so here I've got the self-registration. So let's just uh, say this is the user, Rob. So this external user for the first time that they access stuff have to do a self sign up and just put in a password and their name and then do sign up. And then after that, they can access that file. And you can see here, there's that file that I've got access to. And of course, I can uh, go and edit that file um, as that external user. So in this case, I can just quite happily edit that file there. But also notice down here, I've got where the other user was that we just opened that up with. So you can have multiple people editing the file at the same time. 
And maybe in, more importantly, you can go and um, uh, take the option to follow the editor. So if you're editing a document together, everyone sees what the person's typing on that document there, or if they wanted to, they can um, type in their own stuff in some other place in the document. Um, and of course, I see if I'm viewing the bit of the document they're editing, I'm going to see that come up um, on my screen there. So let's just uh, go through some of the other options uh, that we've got um, uh, here. We talked about doing full text searching. So here I can specify, let's go and search through everything and find group wise. Uh, notice here is the person who shared that document. I've just got an email telling me that the um, uh, Robin, that external user, has just accessed um, the file. Rob Redders has accessed the file there. So I get told when things happen, if I wanted uh, to be told uh, on that sort of thing. And I also get a nice report telling me when um, I can run a report uh, telling me when people access the file for the first time. Um, and the email I only get when somebody accesses, the first person accesses it for the first time. So if I shared something with 100 people, I'm not going to get 100 emails. I just get the first email when the first one accesses it there. If I want to know when the 100 people accessed it, I'd need to take the option for the report. So for instance, here, um, I've got an access report that will show me when people um, access that file. Um, right, uh, where were you? Oh, yeah, searching. Uh, if I just do a search here for GroupWise, you can see lots of files coming up, not necessarily with GroupWise in the file name. I've got docx files, spreadsheets, I've got PDF document coming through there. Um, I've got uh, uh, PowerPoints coming in there as well. So anything that mentions uh, GroupWise in this instance somewhere within the document is going to be thrown up um, and have the results returned there. So, you know, I can search through terabytes of data for exactly the file that I wanted. Um, something else when sharing files, if I don't want somebody to have to do that self-registration that we were talking about before, I do have the option to go and share just a link. So I can give them rights to view the file or to download the file. And if I take that now, all I'd need to do is send this link to someone, they click on it and they're going to access that file. They don't need to do a self sign up or anything. The bad thing about that is you lose a bit of security. So because I don't know who it is accessing that file, um, whereas with the self sign up, I know who that is. Um, and indeed they can forward that link on to somebody else um, and they can access the file. So. Um, we lose a little bit um, of information uh, there and security. But if it's something that's not a secure document, uh, then you're quite happy to uh, do that. Then you can do that. Uh, and of course, uh, you can, the administrator has rights over all of this. Who can share? Can they share with a file link? Can they share externally? Uh, and so on there. Okay, that's the web interface um, there. Let's just go and have a look at the desktop interface. I'm going to show you the desktop interface running uh, on Windows, but we do have um, similar capabilities on um, Mac, and there is a, a desktop for Linux as well, though it's got slightly different functionality um, uh, than the Windows one. So here, if I come in, this is files that are sitting in my, um, uh, effectively on my C drive. Um, so I've got access to those files. And of course here, I can see the same files that we had before. Notice here the finance folder I've blocked actually because it's confidential information. I don't want people to be able to um, uh, access the finance folder when I'm offline. Uh, and of course, you know, this may be terabytes of data that I've got access to on my local drive. And you're thinking, 
yeah, but I've only got a 250 gig drive in there. How am I going to fit all my terabytes of data that's on the back end on my poor little this. Well, in fact, we haven't actually got the files downloaded. They're just pointers to files. The ones that are actually downloaded are the ones with little blue mark you can see there. Um, uh, and so those are uh, local um, to the um, uh, workstation, whereas the other ones are virtual disks that are uh, coming through. So here, um, if I, let's take um, this file here, if I open that file up, that will bring that file down automatically and give me access to that. So you can see now that's got a little blue mark there. So just as I um, do that, and you can see there, I've got notification coming through about changes to uh, that document when we edited it a bit earlier. Um, so here, um, uh, that's now downloaded, so I can edit that file if I were offline, for instance. Uh, and in this instance, um, uh, because it's been downloaded dynamically, I'm going to uh, delete that file after 30 days off my local machine. It doesn't matter, because if I go into Word and say open recent files, it will just pull it down again. But it's a way of stopping my machine from filling up uh, with space. And indeed, you can turn that off or change the number of days. If I want something to be there permanently, I can just uh, right click on that and say make available offline. And that will be available offline um, permanently. And as I said, as changes happen on the back end, I'll pull those down um, from there as well. Um, we do have some um, uh, ransomware protection capabilities, uh, let's say, in uh, the product. So I can say any unknown application that's not Word, Excel, PDF reader, that tries to access a file and download it, we're not going to let it download that file. So that um, uh, we've got that sort of protection. Um, so it can't download the file, encrypt it, and re-upload it up again. Um, there, so you've got ransomware protection with that. And while we're talking about ransomware protection, we also have a capability that stops people from um, uh, putting up files that aren't actually, for instance, a Word document, even though it's got a docx extension. So we'll look at the signature, internal signature of a file. If that is not a Word document, even though we allow Word documents to be uploaded, we're not going to let it go up. So um, again, if somebody's trying to put an encrypted file into the system, uh, we can stop that happening. Um, so, and of course, something else that I can do here is share uh, this file with um, people. So uh, straight from within here, you can see there the people I shared with earlier. Um, and we've got that file link, but if I want to go and share this with uh, Andy, for instance, I can just say, I'm going to share that with Andy, and we've got the same options that we um, had before uh, to do that, and I can access my share report and so on down the bottom there, um, straight from within here as well, should I wish to. So that's the um, desktop side of things. We do have collision detection, by the way, in there. So if I edit a file offline and Jenny edits the file offline, um, when we upload there, then uh, we uh, have a, um, uh, a notification saying that uh, there's a uh, collision and it will save it as a different file name. So I'm not going to overwrite somebody else's work that they've done when they're offline, uh, which is um, quite nice capability there. Uh, we do have integration into uh, Microsoft Office. So let me just um, bring up a um, new file here. So here um, I've got an option to open straight from Filer. Um, so I've got my um, uh, files in here. Uh, let's take um, a uh, document here. Don't know what that document is. There we go. So I can edit this file and indeed when I save it, that's going to go straight back um, 
uh, into um, Filer and onto my file system there. Um, but what I can also do from here, you may have noticed when I was looking a moment ago, is that I can share from here. So if I wanted to uh, share this uh, with someone, um, I can just uh, put in their name, give them the same rights that we had previously, um, and um, when it expires, and then just share that uh, with them there. Something else that we've got is integration into both um, GroupWise, if you're running GroupWise, and also Outlook. Um, I'll show you the Outlook side of things um, here. Uh, so um, here, um, if I wanted to attach a file, I can straight from Filer. Uh, so let's take that file there. And that just puts a pointer into uh, your message. So I don't know if you've ever had the issue where uh, you've sent, tried to send an email and it gets bounced because it's too big. Um, and it gets very frustrating um, having to uh, try and uh, do an FTP site or something to get that file up to the user. What you can do here is just send a pointer to the file. And so um, here, I solve the problem of messages bouncing because they're too big because this is only a pointer um, to a file and the actual message itself is a, a couple of hundred bytes rather than 10 meg or whatever. And uh, so we can solve that. The other thing about this is that um, uh, if you're running on an email system uh, that doesn't do a single message store, um, like luckily GroupWise does, but many message systems out there don't. If I send a, a 10 med message to 100 people, um, that's what and one gig of space that's just disappeared because they all get a copy. With this, you've effectively given yourself a single message store. So you've got um, a far more efficient way of storing information there. Um, and of course, depending on what settings I've got with this, I can make people log in. And so I've got a full audit trail of who's actually looked at that file um, and accessed that file uh, as well. Robin, we've got an incoming question that may be a nice follow up of this. Um, so now you're talking about sharing a file through email. Yeah. Um, but I, we have a question from someone that where uh, people actually need to you to fill in a monthly report that they need to send out. Would that be something that you could easily up, have sent out to Filer or up, upload to Filer? Uh, yes, of course. And you could do something like just sending out a pointer to that file, and every month you just uh, update the file. They click on the link they got sent five months ago and it will be the latest document. Um, so you don't actually need to send out that um, report every month uh, uh, to the users, or you may just want to send out a reminder to them that it's there on the link and give them the link again, but you can just edit the report, save it, and then anyone clicking on that link will get the latest version. And so. what if they want to do like a monthly report that they need to fill in and, and upload somewhere? Oh, okay, so if there's a, I understand the question now. So yes, thank you. you you're preempting me. I was doing this, going to do this one at the end. <laughs> so here, um, let's say I've got a report that needs to be uploaded into this uh, location. I have an option here to request a file. So here I can just send this to an internal user um, or an external user um, here. So here, um, I can send this, please upload report. So this is going to an external user um, and I can just send that request. So now that user will get an email, you can see coming in there saying, um, please um, upload the file. So I can click on that link and then I can drag and drop a file or let's browse for one. Uh, let's take um, that file there. And I can say upload and that's in there. And now, of course, 
as the person who initiated that upload request, I'll get an email telling me that it's been uploaded. So I'm not going to keep checking whether that's uh, been delivered or not um, there. So you can see I've got that email has come in there saying the uploaded file has gone up. And that file is going to be, uh, if I just do a refresh here, is going to be sitting in here. There's that file there. And it tells me, uh, uh, puts in the email address of the person who uploaded it and the file name. So I can get lots of people uploading their monthly reports straight into Filer into a directory. If I yeah, want and now, now you made it available for only 30 days, but you can just make this available forever as long as you want to have that file upload option open. Uh, right. Not quite. That's a one-time only uh, request uh, that we've sent out there. If I wanted to make something a bit more permanent, then um, let's just find something with a there. Uh, what I can do is create a directory and when I share that, oh, if I have something that I've actually allowed to share, I don't have permissions. Sorry, you can see my sharing permissions kicking in there that uh, we talked about before. Um, but here, if I share this, um, I have something called a contributor, uh, right? So now they can add files into this directory. Okay. And so we can do it that way if you wanted a one-time sort of thing that they'd go in. Okay, where were we? You, ju you jumped ahead of um, what I wanted to show there, <laughs> but never mind. Just gone and uh, messed up my whole flow, Ron. Um, where are we? Oh, mobile side of things. So we mentioned before that we have got uh, mobile uh, capabilities. Uh, we have this available for iOS, Android, Windows Mobile, um, and um, I think there's a BlackBerry version as well, though that's not used too much these days. Uh, so let me just try and bring up my iPad here just to show you that coming up. So that's my iPad here. Let's just view that full screen. So here, if I just go into Filer, um, I've got access to exactly the same things we had before, my home drive. By the way, your home drive, you don't have to set up multiple times. It will import the um, configuration that you've got from uh, Active Directory or eDirectory and bring those in. I've got access to my net folders here as well. Um, so let's just go into... Um, my files here. Again, you can see the little circle on that file there, meaning that that's stored locally um, on the um, workstation. Um, I can obviously preview files um, here quite happily. Um, uh, and as with the other interfaces, I can um, edit that file online. So here, if I just come in, um, so I've got the options here to edit the file quite happily. And actually, let's just do bring up one of the other users that uh, we had here. So here you can see as I'm typing on my iPad, Let's try and arrange that so you can actually see what I'm typing. So as I type on my iPad, you can see the other users seeing what I'm typing coming up there. And indeed, if I, from my desktop here, if I come and ed edit that file as well, because I've got the option to edit that file from here, um, I will be able to see what they're typing as well from within uh, there, should I wish to. So, um, some of the other capabilities that we've got uh, with this, let me just put that back to full screen. Um, and so I can edit the, those files quite happily. Of course, I can share files 
from here if I wanted to. So exactly the same sharing options that we had before. Um, I can put in there. Again, I can access my share report and so on, uh, should I wish to. Um, and I can also uh, do full text searching here. Uh, so if I wanted to go and find everything with GroupWise in again, I can just do a search straight from here. So from my Android phone or my Apple phone, I can search through all the terabytes of data on the servers at the back end, um, find the file that I want, and from here, just go and share that with someone. So, um, uh, you know, sometimes I'm out in the evening um, and somebody in the States will phone me up and say, can I have that file? So I can just take out my, um, that's the editing we just did on that file uh, coming through there. Um, you can get a digest on those emails, by the way. So you get one email a day rather than multiple emails. Um, so then I'll just take out my iPhone, um, find the file I want to share uh, and share it with them straight from, uh, you know, when I'm out in the restaurant or whatever. So I don't have to get to a workstation to share it with them or that sort of thing. Um, here we also link into the um, standard iOS file open dialog. So if I've got an email um, coming through, um, if I wanted to, I can uh, just um, attach a file straight in here um, from, if Apple would let me in, add a document. So here you can see um, I've got access straight into all my network information here. So I can just go into my sales folder and just go and um, uh, add a file straight from there to the email that I'm going to send out. So very easy from my mobile devices to access all the data that's on the back end, uh, should I wish to. So that is um, the uh, mobile thing there. Just let me just show you some other bits and pieces uh, that uh, we have in here as well. Most probably one of them is uh, advanced authentication. So we do have the capability to do multi-factor authentication through to Filer, should we wish to. And this is something you get an entitlement for. So no additional license costs for, um, uh, oh, okay, I've just uh, come down there for this. So here, let me just enable that uh, here. Should I, on my other screen, so, You'll see I'll get kicked out in a moment from uh, my other apps because I haven't authenticated properly uh, with those. So here now, if I come in to log in with Filer, let's just um, show you this on, is that going to, oh. Let's just show you that coming up on my phone here. So here, if I log in now, what's going to happen is that's going to prompt me for a one-time code. And there you can see that's just arrived on my phone. So 902315, and that gives me access into Filer. So you've got this additional uh, security on login should you wish. And as I said, that's no additional license cost uh, with the product. Uh, you get that as standard and that gives you the SMS one-time password I just showed you, uh, email one-time password and also a time-based one-time password. Um, uh, so that's a number that changes every um, 30 seconds or whatever you specify. And that can be delivered either by a hard token or a soft token on your phone, for instance, uh, that you've got that capability. But um, I stress that uh, that's no additional cost whatsoever. 
uh, as far as licenses are concerned. Right, let's um, just crack up. Uh, are there any questions that have come through? Yes, uh, Robin, um, I've got a, a couple of questions that have come through as well. Um, what uh, kind of reporting is available that is on the access and activities that the users are doing on the system? Yeah, so we do have uh, lots of reports available. Um, so this just going in as an administrator. Um, I've got the option down here for reports. Um, and we've got lots of different reports available and you can write your own reports as well uh, using SQL theories, queries if you, you wanted to. But most probably the one most people are interested in is this one, which is the user activity report. So let me just um, download that and show you that coming in. So what this report does is it logs every, no, I don't want to log in. Thank you. No, I'm just about to get another text on my phone. Um, sorry, that was the office add-in uh, just kicking in there because um, this time around I had to enable security. So here you can see every single item uh, action has been logged. So Robin has viewed this particular file. Um, I can see that Robin shared this file uh, addressed to a haggis with Adele at that point. Um, there. I can see these files were deleted. I can see that shares got modified. Um, I can see that somebody edited a file, changed, uh, added files. Um, also, every action that somebody does in here uh, gets um, logged into the system. Um, so you've got a full audit trail of what's been going on. Uh, which is quite nice, but there are other reports as well in there, but that's the main one. You said okay. you had some other questions there. Yeah. Um, there's also one, um, is version control supported and if not, is it being planned? Um, version control is not in the product at the moment. Um, it is something that's on the roadmap. Um, I'm not, they haven't announced what it's going to be in um, the next version. So we've just had um, uh, a version release about uh, two months ago, um, 4.2, and we had a minor release, 4.2.1, that gave some additional functionality as well, was released last week, actually. Um, and 4.3 should be out at the end of the year, if we're lucky. They haven't announced what's going to be in 4.3. Um, but uh, version control might be at that point, or um, uh, I suspect it will be more likely into next year that we'll see that functionality. But it is certainly something they're looking at putting in. Well, while you're talking about all the versions, we've got one question about uh, version upgrades. Uh, customers using Filer 3.2, which is obviously quite old. Yeah. Um, to upgrade to 4.2, they first need to go to 4, and then they can go to 4.2. Is that correct? That's correct. They need to, if they're running uh, 3.2, they need to upgrade, first of all, to uh, latest version 3.4 um, on that. And that uh, that's just going to be clicking the button. They've obviously already got their upgrade uh, online updates set up if they're at 3.2. So they just need to update to uh, hit the button to do the online update to 3.4 and then um, go up to... Um, uh, four zero, and then do an online update to four two uh, one, which is the current version. Um, there is a video out on the web um, uh, of how to do that upgrade, um, uh, which uh, if you can't find, let me know, and I'll uh, dig it up for you. Yeah, I can also answer on that question. If anyone has got an existing file implementation. Uh, at NetCP, we've already gone through that entire process, so we understand exactly what is necessary and required to perform an upgrade. And um, whether it's a, a, a single server implementation or a multi-server implementation as well. Am I correct um, saying uh, that the customer would need to be within maintenance? Be in sorry, I didn't hear that. The customer would, would, the customer would need to be in maintenance in order to upgrade. So yep. you'd need to be paying for, yes. for maintenance. Otherwise, um, that would be a different situation. So the, the software must be supported. 
Yeah, okay. the online online update key wouldn't work. Yes, yeah, out of maintenance. Yeah, that is correct. Otherwise, nothing can upgrade. Um, I've got an, uh, uh, maybe a last question here. Um, if uh, my organization is already um, sitting in um, Windows 365, but we still have a lot of stuff on premise, uh, why should we not use Microsoft OneDrive? So you've got the data on prem um, already sitting on your existing file servers. Uh, you don't really want to migrate that into um, OneDrive. Um, you want to use your existing investment that you've made uh, in your storage and use that um, and just expose it from where it is in place there. Okay. Any, any other questions from anyone? Ah. Okay, um, in which case, I'll just go through uh, the licensing bits and pieces. So, okay. um, there are a couple of um, options for Filer. I've been showing you Filer Advanced today. Um, there is something called Filer Standard, which you get as an entitlement with OES. Um, Filer Advanced has some additional quite a number of additional features, including the content editor uh, bit I showed and the advanced authentication, but there are quite a few things there that uh, standard doesn't have. Um, typically, we only sell Filer Advanced. Um, if you have got Filer Standard with OES, you can upgrade uh, to Filer Advanced with a subscription cost. And on the back end, you just need to apply a new license to uh, get to uh, enable those. You don't have to do a whole reinstall or anything. It's just um, uh, a minute's work to do the upgrade in, uh, from standard to advanced. Um, so it's a user-based license. Um, so you only need a license for your internal users. So that's your LDAP users that are coming from Active Directory or eDirectory or local users that you've created. Any invited users, external users like uh, who are outside your organization are free of charge. You don't need to have a license for those. So I may be um, an organization of a thousand people with um, a million customers that I'm sharing documents with. I don't need to have licenses for the million users. I only need for my thousand internal users uh, there. And obviously we can do a perpetual license with annual maintenance, which is what we normally do, or there is a subscription, uh, annual subscription license if you want as well. So if you want to get started with Filer, uh, we do have a Filer evaluation. Uh, you can sign up for that evaluation um, and download it from uh, the website there. And I'm sure um, uh, Cobus uh, will be uh, sending out the slide deck afterwards. Uh, so you'll have that link there. Um, you then need to use the update channel to get the latest updates because the version you've got on there is going to be 4.0 and you then need to patch that up to 4.2. The trial comes with a 60 day of that license key of Filer Advanced. Um, uh, so you can um, try out Filer Advanced um, free of charge. You don't need to buy licenses now. You've got two months or so of playing around to decide whether you uh, want that. Um, that download includes licenses for the content editor, which was the bit that allowed me to edit documents. And there's also a product called Teamworks, which is a text-based messaging solution that you get as part of that as well. Uh, one thing to bear in mind there is they have their own online update channel. So if you want to patch those, you have separate keys for those uh, there. Um, most probably the main um, place to um, access uh, information on Filer is the community page, um, uh, which is on that link there. Let me just show you that here. Um, so here you can post um, uh, do posts 
uh, asking questions. Um, you can put in um, ideas for uh, new features in Phyla should you want to. And we go through those on a regular basis. You can see we've delivered what about 25% of ideas that people um, have uh, requested uh, there. Um, uh, so you've got that. What we've also got in here, um, most probably more important for those of you who are setting up a um, uh, trial is we do have access to videos. So we have videos on various uh, bits and pieces of Phyla. Uh, there are a couple of videos on uh, installing Phyla in real time um, for a single uh, uh, appliance installation for Windows. So that's what just over one hour um, it takes to set up Phyla. And that's one for OES environments, how to set it up for OES. So if you download, you can follow the video on how to set it up uh, in your particular environment, should you wish to. Oh, and we do have a regular drop-in webinar um, as well. The next one actually is on Thursday um, coming up. So um, you can um, register for that uh, on the link there uh, coming in. Okay, we're just about to run out of time. Videos we've mentioned. Um, so I've put some links in here as to a product homepage, some success stories, things like documentation um, and the idea exchange we were talking about there. So I think we've got about a minute left or so. Any other questions? There's one question coming up. Um, can you integrate Phyla with advanced litigation? I thought I just show, showed that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so the, as I said, with Filer Advanced, you get an entitlement for Advanced Authentication Limited. So no additional license costs. If you've already got Advanced Authentication, that's brilliant because that gives you all the advanced, uh, authentication methods um, rather than uh, just the four that come with the limited edition. Um, but um, so, uh, as I said, with the limited version, you get SMS, one-time password, email, one-time password, time-based, one-time password, I think Radius client as well there. Um, with the full version, you get things like smart card um, uh, access, you get uh, uh, facial recognition capabilities, you've got um, smartphone um, integration with things like geofencing. So you have to be within an addition, uh, a specific building in order to authenticate. If you're not in that building, it won't let you and things like that. But that's part of the full advanced authentication product with the limited one. You don't, uh, you've only got those four methods I mentioned. Yeah, Any other? Also, yeah, there's, there's uh, one last question that I think popped up and that is a question around pricing. Okay, pricing, um, talk to NetCB about, and they'll let you know the pricing. I guess yeah, that comes down to you there. <laughs> no, we, um, uh, um, I see uh, one person actually requested uh, for pricing. I will, uh, we will respond to, to you directly um, after this um, uh, webinar so that uh, we can um, discuss pricing because it really depends on um, the kind of contract, you, existing contract you may have with Microfocus uh, whether you're in government or in the private sector or educational. So that will determine your final pricing at the end of the day. And that brings us uh, basically towards the end of today's webinar. I thank Robin for presenting us and enlightening us about um, uh, everything that you can do with Filer. And thank you to everyone else from Microfocus that uh, um, attended on the panel. Um, just for you, uh, for those of you that want to know more about GroupWise, um, you can go to our website. Tomorrow we have a, 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 another webinar on uh, uh, GroupWise today and tomorrow, uh, which will be very um, in, um, insightful of what is being planned on the GroupWise side. Um, this uh, webinar will be available within the next 24 hours on our website, as well as on our YouTube channel. Um, I will also make sure that uh, email is sent with the actual slide deck to the uh, people that attended the webinar. Thank you very much.
have a good day.